Hey everyone and welcome to today's Facebook Live with GBMC Healthcare. Today we're talking about hospital visits and easing any fears. They can be scary, especially for children. And let's welcome our guest, Child Life Specialist Jennifer Seiler. Now we're going to talk about the Child Life Program and how it could help your little ones. And we want to hear from anyone watching, so please don't hesitate to ask us your questions. Welcome Jennifer. Thank you. So tell me, what is a Child Life Specialist? Yeah, so we're a part of the multidisciplinary team. We help to normalize the hospital experience experience for patients and families. Okay, so when somebody comes into the hospital, I bring my toddler in, mm -hmm. we see you. What happens? Yeah, so we work um, in the ER inpatient unit right now. It's a combined, combined care unit at GBMC. Um, and what we do is to help lessen anxiety and help inform patients and families why they're there and help prepare them for what they're going to encounter. And so you have some friends with you that you we read do. today. Yeah, so we, um, we know that children learn best through play. So mm -hmm. a lot of our preparation educational tools are play-based. Um, so one of the things that we use is a hospital buddy, which is um, just a blank cloth doll. Um, anything that can happen to a child can happen to hospital buddy. So a lot of times in the ER, um, patients are very concerned about uh, getting needles. So that is something that we practice on this hospital buddy a lot. You can see our little buddy right here already has an IV placed. Um, mm -hmm. So what we would do when a kid needs to get a procedure done, such as an IV, we would come in with real medical equipment. We would see if they've ever heard of a IV before, uh, if they know the steps. Um, if they don't, we're gonna let them go through all of the steps using real medical equipment. So they're handling the medical equipment they become familiar with it. When kids are play, they, they learn best through play. Uh, so when they are calm, that's when they're going to retain most of the information. So they'll go through all of the steps. And then most importantly, they're going to develop a coping plan. So maybe when um, the IV goes in, they're going to blow bubbles. Maybe they are going to look at an I spy book. Mm -hmm. Maybe just talk um, with the child life specialist or the medical team that's doing the procedure. Um, we're also going through that preparation, make sure that they know that the medical team are safe people, that they mm -hmm. are here here not to do harm, that they are here to help them feel better and help them go home so we're all on the same page. And I think too, seeing this and understanding the process not only helps the child, but helps the entire family. Right. Yeah, so when kids come in, um, you know, think of your own children if you have one. When they are scared, when they're anxious, who do they look to? They look to as parents. Um, and a lot of times, um, parents are anxious when they're coming in. Right. So our job is not only to help prepare the patient for what to expect, but to also make sure the family understands everything that's happening to their child. And also a parent's role is to help make the child make your child feel comfortable help take away pain so we want to make sure we don't strip that right from you as parents mm -hmm. so we're going to give you an active role so maybe during a procedure such as an IV you're going to actually hold your child in a position of comfort um, instead of just watching things happen to your child you right. can be an active participant um, in that to help them um, feel better you know I have to say we were talking earlier that's been one of the most traumatic experiences for me is one time we did encounter something like that and you and you see all these people that are coming around to work on your child mm -hmm. and you're trying to hold your child down but you're saying you can actually help us with those mechanisms to mm -hmm. understand no you're not holding your child down you're helping your child and you can feel better about that as well yeah absolutely so when kids get upset the you know appropriate coping strategy is crying so you're right. going to see crying with kids but we can then inform families that crying is appropriate um, but we can also say try to eliminate things that can be very scary such as laying flat children laying flat on their back um, gives them absolutely no control whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So that's why we encourage families, um, if they're young enough and, and willing enough, to hold them um, mm -hmm. in a position of comfort. So a lot of times when kids have to get procedures done, um, I can demonstrate on our little buddy here, they'll sit in a parent's lap. Mm -hmm. And your job as the parent is just to give them a big hug instead of them kind of being forced down and things happening to them. Mm -hmm. um, so that is, um, that's one of our roles as a child life specialist to help inform parents and patients of what's going to happen. Got it. Who yeah. else do you have with you? Yeah, so we also have expanded our services, which we're really excited, um, into the pre-surgery area. So kids that are coming in for surgery, um, you know, has different things that are going to happen to them um, if they come into the ER. So this is Hannah, and Hannah oftentimes um, 
you know, needs to have the same surgery done as a patient who's coming in. Um, mm -hmm. So sometimes we have um, a lot of TNAs, a lot of the, the tonsils and adenoids coming out. So our job is to help um, them come become familiar with the surgery experience. Um, so we do a lot of play with the anesthesia mask. So Hannah needs to breathe in that anesthesia. So we'll talk about how it goes over the nose, over the mouth. Hannah's going to then fall asleep. Um, and then we'll talk about how the tonsils will come out while we're not remembering or feeling any pain. And when surgery's done, you know, the anesthesia mask is going to come off and we're going to wake up. Um, and then for the older kids, you can really understand, we actually have pom-poms that are in here that we talk about how the tonsils are actually going to come out. Um, and I've seen to up here is one. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about how it comes out, how our throat's going to feel when we wake up. Um, and again, talking about the whole family as a whole, we're going to um, talk to the family of what children look like when they go under anesthesia. Mm -hmm. It can be very hard for a, a parent to see, um, you know, how our body gets very tired mm -hmm. um, and very heavy when we get anesthesia. And then also when we wake up, mm -hmm. a lot of times kids um, are not happy when they mm -hmm. wake up and that's mm -hmm. completely normal. So we want to make sure that the family feels prepared for what um, that experience looks, looks like. And we also, um, for kids, want them to practice putting that mask on. So what we do, again, being play-based, we use bubbles a lot. So for kids who are kind of anxious and don't want to put the mask on right away, mm -hmm. maybe we'll blow bubbles and then catch the bubbles with the mask. And then we'll right. practice actually putting it on and blowing bubbles, if I can get it to work. Um, there you go. So taking that deep breath and blowing the bubbles and that just practices getting that anesthesia mask on their face uh -huh. prior to them going into the operating room. So when they see it in the operating room, hopefully they're not as anxious, not as scared. This mask is already familiar and they've already practiced taking those deep breaths. Got it. And then the needle. I mean, the needle gives me anxiety. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah so definitely the babies. Yeah, exactly. And the, the good thing about having, um, you know, being pediatrics, we know that needles are so anxiety provoking for them that um, actually a lot of IVs are not placed until the child's under anesthesia. So mm -hmm. we talk about that. A lot of times kids are coming in, they could care less about their surgery. They're so nervous about getting that needle. So we can tell them once you get your sleepy medicine, that's when your IV is going to be placed. You won't remember or feel any pain with that. So if my child is a patient at GBMC, mm -hmm. how do I make sure that we uh, see a child like specialist? Yeah, so like I said before, we are currently working in the ER inpatient unit to combine care unit. We work from 12 to 10 p.m. Um, we see as many patients as we can during that time. Um, we also are in the pre-surgery area Thursdays and Fridays. Um, and we also are trying to offer um, pre-op tours. So if your child is having surgery mm -hmm. um, or having a big procedure done, you can contact us and we will try to bring you into the hospital. We can, you know, prepare families what books to read, what, um, you know, are big on play medical equipment. Um, um, so allowing the kids to play at home, to become familiar and talk about the process prior to coming in um, and then going back to pre-op tours, we'll bring them into uh, the surgery experience, kind of play through the surgery experience, watching caregivers dress up in the medical garb. Um, we'll go into the operating room and see the operating for it firsthand. We'll talk about things that you can and can't do, like you can't eat, but you can play, mm -hmm. um, packing a hospital bag beforehand. Um, so you can, um, so, so we're there. Um, um, and if you're finding yourself um, in a situation, always ask the medical team, is there a child specialist there? Um, and they can come find us if we aren't already involved. Hmm. Now, how did you guys decide that you needed this. Yeah, so a lot of, um, so I was, uh, went through a lot of schooling and certified to become a child specialist. I worked at another institution for, um, for about 10 years. Um, and then not a lot of community hospitals have child life programs. Mm -hmm. We are one of two right now, which we're really excited of in the Maryland area. Um, and, you know, being in a community hospital, I think is so important because that's where families are utilizing um, healthcare. That's where your child is born. You come in because because of that first fever, you're coming in because your child um, fell because they're a toddler and needs stitches, which happens all the time. So they're utilizing the community hospitals a lot more than the larger institutions, um, unless your child has a chronic condition and they're followed there. So um, our job is to help 
like I said, normalize, make the medical team less threatening. Um, so if you have a positive experience in a community hospital, then maybe next time you utilize that emergency room, um, your child's gonna be much more um, welcoming, less scared, and also make pediatrician visits a lot more less scary because they know that medical teams are there to help them, not hurt them, that we are all here to help um, the patient feel better. And what about for a child who has, you know, really been through it, been through a lot and very highly anxious on mm -hmm. any type of visit? How, mm -hmm. how do you assist those type of children? Yeah, so um, a lot of the work that I'm talking about we are doing in the hospital, um, but part of our job is to help um, you know, share with patients and families what life looks like outside the hospital. So maybe they had a very traumatic experience, um, or maybe there is a reason or something that's going um, to um, influence them outside of the hospital. So we talked with families about, you know, typical behaviors. So there might be some regression um, with the patient. There might be some aggression that you might see, and that's all normal. Um, so we always encourage, encourage medical stories to read at home. Maybe you incorporate a medical story into the bedtime routine. I know with my daughter, we're always using medical equipment as uh, and playing on our, our stuffed animals because kids process things through play. So you will see a child kind of mimic um, things that happen to them in a medical environment um, on their dolls. Um, you know, I'll always see um, my daughter, you saying, open up, it's not going to hurt because she's <laughs> hearing that. Mm -hmm. um, and she's, you know, playing through that. So kids who've been through traumatic experiences, the more play opportunities you can provide them at home, I would absolutely encourage. Um, and uh, a lot of that processing will, will ha help. Okay. So that's for mom and dad mm -hmm. and anybody yeah. else that's there and of course the patient. But what about siblings? Because it can be traumatic for siblings yes. too, right? Absolutely. So siblings are often the forgotten um, kind of piece in this puzzle. Mm -hmm. I know working in an ER, um, a lot of times I've seen it all the time where a patient will come and who's really sick. Um, you know, medical team goes rushing to them to take care. Um, someone is supporting the parents, but then the sibling is just kind of watching, not knowing what's happening. So my job as a child life specialist would be to help explain what's going on to their sibling, um, that we're all there to help them um, feel better. Uh, we also do a lot of preparation for maybe they're coming in to see their sibling in an inpatient um, environment, or maybe um, even in NICU, we, we're trying to expand into NICU services. So maybe it's the first time they're seeing their sibling in a hospital environment. So what we would do was sometimes we'll take pictures of the room of where their, pa their sibling is mm -hmm. and show them before going into the room this is where your sibling is. You know, what do you see in the room? Do you have any questions? You know, this is what this, um, you know, machine is. This is what that tube means is how it's helping them. Mm -hmm. So we definitely want to um, help encourage the siblings um, to be a part of this process because they're impacted by hospitalization as well. All right, we have a question from yeah. Laura, so we want to get to that. And uh, if we can pop that out on the screen, what things should be included in a hospital bag in preparation for a procedure? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, so I think the hard thing is knowing what to anticipate when you're coming into mm -hmm. a medical situation, <coughs> um, especially if it's an, uh, an ER visit because it is so um, emergent that you mm -hmm. oftentimes don't think about, oh my gosh, I need to pack this, I need to pack that. Um, so that's the beauty of having child life here. But going back to what to put in the hospital bag, um, comfort items. Um, what does your child um, you know, find comfort in? Is it a stuffed animal? Is it um, something that they suck? Um, is it a pacifier if they're young? So making sure that you do have those comfort items, a blanket um, that can go with them. Um, and then as for preparing them for what to, you know, what's to come, always ask for a child life specialist. Um, and if there's not a child life specialist there, I empower parents and patients to actually ask the medical team, can you tell me what this procedure looks like? Mm -hmm. um, my child's never had this before. Can you tell me what the steps are? Um, because if you're able to explain things in steps, it's much more manageable for the patient and family to understand what's going to happen. Um, so I hope that that answers your question. And you also have resources. We've been at the GBMC mm -hmm. ER and, and I know that, you know, we were provided with some toys and some things to really mm -hmm. try to take her mind off of what yes. she was going through. So obviously you're not going to bring Legos to the hospital, but you know, yeah. GBMC can come through for you and not necessarily provide a toy store for them, but certainly give them a few little items just to distract their mind from the real medical realities exactly. of what's happening. And that's another part of our job is just to help familiarize and normalize that experience. So we do have those fun 
fun toys. We have mm -hmm. the Legos, we have the board <coughs> games, we have the card games, tons of arts and crafts. Um, because sometimes what a family and patient needs is that familiar thing first before comp helping to ease their anxieties and then they can learn about their experiences. So I oftentimes am coming in, the first thing I'm bringing is Candyland mm -hmm. or Legos or a craft activity. And then once everyone's a little bit calmer and can kind of understand um, why they're there, I can then go in a little bit deeper of this is what your experience is going to look like. Got it. What about for you? This has to be so rewarding for you. What's the, maybe the most rewarding or your favorite part of the job? Yeah. Um, so I've been doing this for about 10 years now, and I think it hasn't changed. My favorite part of the job is having um, a family or patient or both come in who are so anxious, and then them either leaving or next time I see them being like, I don't need you anymore because they've learned their coping tools that they know that they can deep breathe using bubbles or they can use the I spy book or they can count um, but they um, have learned enough to not need to utilize us um, which is kind of silly but um, that's kind of my favorite part of the job. And is there a child life specialist there all the time? So we are um, 12 to 10 p.m. right now um, in the ER inpatient unit, which is the combined care unit. Mm -hmm. um, we're working on maybe going to 12 hour shifts, um, but that's a little bit in the future mm -hmm. um, and hoping to ensure seven day coverage in, in the future. For well, everything you talked about, I know both of us having emergency room experiences yep, and then just, I mean, everything that you're saying, I'm like, dang, I wish that, I wish that we had you. I wish that we had you. What is the response, I guess, from the parents? Yeah, I mean, I, I think what we hear from parents is that they didn't know what, they were so fearful of coming into the ER because maybe of something that happened or they've had a bad experience or they'd never been in um, a medical setting such as the ER before or needing to spend the night. Um, so our job, or what they say is just thank you so much for helping me feel, pre feel prepared as mm -hmm. a parent or help my child feel better because I didn't know how to help them. Mm -hmm. Do you have any tips for parents who may have to bring their child to the hospital to help them have a better experience just looking forward? Yeah, I mean, like I said before, always having comfort items, um, just knowing what those comfort items are, uh -huh. knowing your triggers for your child, um, and advocating for them. So maybe, um, you know, we're a big advocate of one voice during procedures or when other medical things are happening. Um, so maybe that one voice is um, a, a caregiver. Maybe it's the nurse that's doing a procedure. Maybe it's the child specialist. But um, And also sharing with the medical team, you know, my child does best when... Um, you know, there's more information or less information, the lights are dim. So just being that advocate for your mm -hmm. child, knowing what works, what doesn't, so we can help cater um, the individual needs of your of the child. And are the services that Child Life uh, provides covered by insurance? Yeah, so we actually don't charge for our services. So um, we are, that's, that's a, a great benefit that um, you can always utilize us. Um, I can't guarantee we're always going to be there, but uh, we'll try our best to, to meet everyone's needs. And how can our viewers right now help to support this program at GBMC? Yeah, so we, um, so I believe there'll be a link or you can write, um, you know, if you want to donate or help, but we are always in need of monetary donations. Since we do not charge for our services, we mm -hmm. are, um, you know, donor funded. So to keep GBMC there, um, we always are looking for you know, monetary donations, but also little things like arts and crafts, board games, card games, books, those normalizing activities. Um, if you want to donate, um, we'll gladly accept new items. Um, and then we also um, are in need of people sewing. If you're a sewer, making these little hospital buddies. Um, I have the pattern um, that, you know, just get a little group together, make some dolls, um, and we will gladly accept them as well. That's very nice. Do you have an age range that you really support? So, uh, yeah, we so we typically see birth through um, 18. Mm -hmm. um, we also have supported, um, you know, adults who have developmental delays, um, and also we have supported um, children of adult patients who are going through, um, you know, some hard times in, in the hospital with their parents or grandparents. Um, but typically we are just seeing birth through 18 right now. Got it. Now, if we want to learn more about what you do in the Child Life Program, mm -hmm. where should we go? So um, you can go to the GBMC website and then um, do uh, pediatrics, mm -hmm. uh, and that will kind of give the... Um, information about pediatrics and how to contact us for more information. Very good. Thank you for your Thank services. You. Yeah. We know that they're so comforting. So yeah. yes, uh, definitely needed. And if you need to go to GBMC, uh, make sure to hit them up, Child Life Specialists. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.